Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a booster box of Double Masters? One year and a half since Masters sets were discontinued, they're back. It's the sequel, Masters 2, The Search for More Money. Each Double Masters booster pack contains not one, but two rares and or mythics. Each booster box contains a box topper with two rares and or mythics. And those rares might contain one or two asterisks as they are not actually rares, but we'll get there. And all in all, this increase in rares comes with an increase in cost, because reasons. So it's double masters, double the rares at double the cost, but does that mean double the value or double the duds? Let's see if this box is treasure or trouble, and let's take a look on the double. Double Masters booster boxes contain 24 packs. Within each pack are two rare and or mythic cards, as well as two foils. The foils can be of any rarity, and each booster box also comes with a box topper with two non-foil rares and or mythics of borderless alternate art showcase cards. The showcase cards are of commons, uncommons, rares, and mythics that have been reimagined in an art style reminiscent of of older magic art from decades past. Although the showcase cards themselves are of commons, uncommons, rares, and mythics, the pool of showcase cards are divided into two rarities, rare and mythic, meaning the common and uncommon cards have been printed to appear at the same rarity as rares, with mythics appearing less frequently. Foil versions of showcase cards are only available in the $100 per pack VIP booster packs, However, unlike the VIP boosters that can only contain one mythic each, regular Double Masters box toppers can contain two non-foil mythics. If all of this seems needlessly complicated, you're right. Even Wizards of the Coast could barely seem to properly describe the contents of, well, any of this accurately, and has issued a multitude of corrections and clarifications, which themselves were oftentimes in need of further clarification and further correction. Buckle up! It's Double Masters. Now, before I dive into the deeper financial value and gameplay discussion, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the commentary video that I made about Double Masters, in which I discussed the deeper philosophical ramifications of the ever-growing cost of Magic the Gathering products and my fears about them. But what I want to say right here is that it is possible for one to hold two distinct ideas without them being in conflict with one another. Those two ideas, of course, being that Double Masters is a fantastic collection of cards and great set in isolation of cost, and also simultaneously that the cost of Double Masters is too high. Now, I'm not saying yet that that is the case with Double Masters, but I am saying that the frustrations, which I explored in this video, do not instantly doom Double Masters to a failing grade, or a criticism on the quality of cards selected for it, or prevent me from praising many other aspects of the product. Please strive not to view things in black and white when there are myriad perspectives which are valid. Let us explore some of those perspectives now. Part 1. How much does it really cost? Here we go again with trying to figure out how much anything in Magic the Gathering costs anymore. Since there is still no stated MSRP, we can examine pricing and availability to determine the expected market price. Now, Card Kingdom, sponsor of this channel, is already sold out, but looking at Channel Fireball and Star City Games, the price is identical, $329.99. TCG Player, which is its Itself, not a store, but rather a marketplace of stores, has a more or less identical cost at $329.95. And interestingly, Amazon is the most expensive place to buy Double Masters at $357.94. So for this video, I will work with a price of $329.99 per box, with a little bit of rounding comes to $13.70 per pack 
which again is a better price per pack than buying them loose. And in addition, by purchasing them in bulk, you get the box topper, which is actually the most important part of Double Masters, which I will get to in just one moment. But before I look at the cards within, I want to explore briefly just how much money we are talking about here. Even if $330 per box ends up netting you a solid return on your money, $330 per box is still $330. And specifically, $330 could get you in Magic the Gathering, a complete tier one modern deck in the form of Modern Blitz, which according to MTG Goldfish is currently the second highest deck in the modern meta. And actually it costs a little bit less to complete than a box of Double Masters. Considering you are not drafting Double Masters anytime soon and just cracking packs, walking away with a fully competitive tier one modern deck instead and an extra 30 dollars to your name is worth some consideration. Or just the fact that much money gets you most of a multitude of other modern decks. After all, $330 is tantamount to purchasing two Scalding Tarns, two Flooded Strands, two Polluted Deltas, and two Verdant Catacombs. Or, of course, several other combinations therein. Or perhaps you might pick up a playset of Cavern of Souls and a playset of Aether Vials and still have a few bucks left over to pick up two Supreme Verdant or add $30 on to get full play sets, four copies each, of the borderless showcase non-foil Tron lands. Perfect for your popper Tron deck. Or, or, or modern, I guess. The examples go on and on, but $330 is a lot to risk on RNG, and singles, especially those in Double Masters, happen to be at a very low price right now. Buying singles might be one of the smartest uses of that cash burning a hole in your pocket, especially when the real value of a box is tied up on your two box topper cards. Oh yes, part two, box toppers and financial value. In examining the price of the cards on the day of launch, it is easy to see the majority of value is linked directly to the two box topper cards, which are almost always going to make or break your box of double masters. Meaning that without the box toppers, most boxes of double masters will not recoup their cost. So make sure yours comes with a box topper because uh, according to a few reports, some are coming without. Oopsie again. The price range of the box toppers has Phyrexian Metamorph at the bottom at $14.90 and Force of Will, unsurprisingly, at the top at $285. This is where the value is. And even dropping Phyrexian Metamorph as the lowest value topper, we still have a range of $18.97 to $285. There are indeed several box toppers with a high value, and that is what you are going to hope to open if you you want to recoup the cost of your box. Cards like Jace at $115, Sword of Feast and Famine at $98, Avacyn Angel of Hope at $94. It's interesting to note that even if we drop the lowest box topper, Phyrexian Metamorph, Looking at that price range of $14.90 to $285, there are only 16 non-showcase cards that fall within it. In other words, only 16 cards worth above $14.90 each. Remember, your packs are practically that, and most of these cards are falling towards the lower end. So while a regular Mana Crypt is $88.83, and a regular Force of Will $82.58, it isn't until you go down below $40 that you start seeing regular regular cards like Sword of Fire and Ice, Chrome Mox, and Doubling Season start to appear. The Urzalan showcases are going for $32 and $30 each, and still we do not have any regular Double Masters cards at this level. It isn't until we start to see cards like Dark Confident at $27, or Karn Liberated, Land Tax at $22.92, Imperial Recruiter at $22.85, Sword of Light and Shadow at $22, and then finally Cyclonic Rift at $20 and Mana Echoes at $19. 
seen. Between the showcases of Meddling Mage and Phyrexian Metamorph, the lowest value box toppers, there's only eight rare slash mythics. Yep, Stoneforge Mystic is a cool $18. Dark Depths and Kalia of the Vast, a little over 15. But again, the rest of your rares and mythics are falling below 1490. So if we're looking at the value of a pack, there's only four more cards above the price of a pack, and even then, just barely. Toxic Deluge, Noble Hierarch, Thoughtseize, and Mana Reflection. What if we're looking at cards between half the price of a pack and $14? There we have only 15. And ultimately, in all, if we don't count box toppers, there are currently 42 rare slash mythics out of 161 worth half the value of a pack or more, $7 and up, or about 26%. And again, I want to emphasize just how much opening a booster box is going to be box topper lottery or bust. And this is just so heartbreaking because in isolation of price, this is an amazing collection of cards. Prior to Ultimate Masters, as I would look at these Masters sets, they would be overflowing with cards that just weren't played in Modern, let alone Legacy or even Commander. It boggled my mind that so much of these Masters sets were must have cards for draft that then took the place of needed reprints, which ended up being just a few at the top, usually in the mythic slot. That started to change with Ultimate Masters, and here, wow, this list that I just went over, aside from maybe Phyrexian Metamorph or Mana Reflections, these cards see play. They're modern staples. There's legacy staples, commander staples, and while there's certainly a lot of just for draft jank still in this product, I have never seen so many components of modern decks just thrown in. And keep in mind, that list keeps going past the $7 per rare slash mythic range, and keeps going by a lot. Sure, we can laugh about Stonehewer Giant, and I will, ha ha ha, but I am beyond impressed at how much of this set is just cards that you see in Modern, and Legacy, and Commander, and Popper. I mean, Brainstorm, and Tron Lands, and Manamorpus, and of course, Oubliette are all Popper playables. There's actually a big fistful even at launch of uncommons worth two bucks or more, with many more at a buck each or even commons at a dollar each, thanks to the Tron lands now with that art and black border and cards like Expedition Map. And hey, it's nice that there are commons that are almost worth a dollar. Chromatic Star, Everflowing Chalice, Brainstorm. The problem is that since Wizards of the Coast has once again raised the price of a master set by so much, and at least according to our early reports, shortened the printing of it by so much that in the end we end up with a product priced incredibly high, and despite it being excellent in isolation of cost, when you introduce the cost, it becomes less and less worth it. But what about actually sitting down to draft and enjoy playing this as a game? Part three, draft and gameplay. There's a global pandemic, you can't draft this set. Final conclusion? Okay, okay, let's talk about what you can do with Double Masters if you want to actually, what's it called? Play a gammy. Webcam sealed. As webcam magic grows and grows, you and either a friend or someone you meet via an MTG Discord, perhaps? Well, you may not be able to draft, but you can absolutely play sealed with Double Masters. Unfortunately, out of, well, literally all the Masters sets, Double is probably one of the worst for sealed and really intended for draft. There's just too many archetypes that rely on the larger pool that draft provides. And so sealed becomes a real build around format for this set, more so even than usual for sealed. So unfortunately, it's not the same by a mile, but better than nothing. Also, many who love draft have said they will pick up a box to hold until after the pandemic, but being brutally honest here, most of us are just buying boxes to crack for cards. And as I already stated, while indeed you can win the lottery here, it all depends on the box topper. And so more importantly than even my final evaluation, more important than my grade or whether you manage to play sealed with this set is this one thing I want desperately for you to take away from this video. Buy 
singles. Singles prices have crashed like crazy. Now and within the next week is the time to buy those singles. Will they go back up? I can't say. Will they continue to drop? Again, I can't say. But these are a huge, huge swath of modern legacy and commander format staples, and they are available at an all-time low thanks to Hooray needed reprints. So what I want to really emphasize is buy those singles. Go down to your local game store, go on to an online LGS marketplace like TCG Player, go to Channel Fireball, go to Star City Games, go to Cool Stuff Inc, or go to sponsor of this channel, cardkingdom.com forward slash TCC. But whatever you do, buy singles. Whoever you buy them from, buy singles. Now more than ever. Trust me, please. Final conclusion. Without the box toppers, even at a lower price for which it is currently selling, Double Masters is not worth it. This is a shame because the cards included, the construction of the set itself in isolation of price is excellent. This is, again, everything a master set should be. Minus not having fetch lands. But really, this is what I feel in my heart a master set should be, only they've increased the price exponentially. Too much, they've gone too far. If Masters 25 didn't cost less even though it sucked, then this shouldn't cost more just because it's well made. Yes, card prices have fallen considerably already and would fall even further if more product had been printed and offered at an even lower price. But that is the one element missing more so than fetch lands, an affordable price, and its omission is a critical error. Grade in isolation of price. It's A quality in terms of reprints, archetypes, the fun and nostalgia and selection of box toppers. I love those things. And overall product design is just marvelous. Grade at $330 per box. A reluctant C. You are running a big risk for loot on these boxes. If you want to, can afford to, and will enjoy doing so, then by all means, go ahead, purchase, open, rip wrappers, enjoy. But if you want to talk about the best use of your cash in order to play Magic the Gathering, in relation to Double Masters, the best use is to buy singles. Especially now, as card prices are at an all-time low for so many of these cards. Go support your local game store. Nearly all of them will make more off $330 of single sales than on selling you a $330 booster box. I I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share with a friend especially, that's more important than even subscribing, and maybe, just maybe, if you've got a minute, leave a comment and let me know what your evaluation of Double Masters is. What about all the murders? Like, like, what about questions of this guy? <laughs> this guy killed a lot of innocent people, but it was under a curse. I think that's a fair question to ask his culpability and guilt. Does he even feel guilty? Should he be punished? What would that punishment entail? These are interesting questions that at a certain point in Magic's history, I honestly believe we would get stories about and exploring. I, I also love the idea of like Garak turning up and like he meets up with Jace and goes, oh, I'm all cured now. And Jace goes, oh, Garak, love to have you back. One quick question though, about those murders, buddy. Uh, right. And then, like, and then, like, them having to have that hard conversation. Yeah.